Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everybody. Going to be talking about a TV show. Although there have been movies, or one movie. It's going to be Twin Peaks. So the TV show or the franchise itself, the brand, is described as an American surreal mystery horror drama. <laughs> and it's a show that I loved. But not at first. Uh, the show was created by Mark Frost and David Lynch and premiered in 1990. So I'm about 19 years old. But I wasn't immediately drawn to it. It was something I was aware of. But it was more my aunt's thing. It wasn't until I was in a relationship several years later, let's say mid-twenties, that I caught on to it and I was captivated. So I loved this show right off the bat. It could do no wrong. I don't even get into the debates of season one versus season two. I just get such a kick out of it. Now, the show did a movie called Fire Walk With Me. And they also came back in 2015-ish and made The Return, which is, I guess, season three. And it was really an 18-hour-long movie they filmed and cut it into segments or episodes. So I'll talk about that in general. I'll get to it. But Mark Frost was um, pretty popular for... Um, Hill Street Blues, a really good show. When, when I grew up, Hill Street Blues was a breakthrough cop show. I've done a podcast on Stoshki and Hutch. I might even do one on like Beretta and Police Woman, you know, shows I grew up with that were on TV. But Hill Street Blues, um, excellent show, long running too. And David Lynch being known for Elephant Man. Um, oh, before, hmm. I wonder what he did before. I think Elephant Man was definitely before Twin Peaks. Now, it premiered and only lasted two seasons. So it ends in 1991, basically, but becomes a cult phenomenon, in my opinion, and look back on it as a breakthrough television show. You know, I... I have those feelings later, appreciating what it is, but there's enough good and bad in it that I don't know if it could be, uh, well, okay, it could still be groundbreaking and uh, an important landmark in television. Okay, I agree. So I just might not put it as the great, uh, in the greatest category. Now, I think it was uh, Blue Velvet and Elephant Man was before. Now, the show's a mystery and gets into some wacky, as it's described, a surreal concept and plots. It gets kind of crazy and wacky and then grounds itself. And I think it has to do with the showrunners, the writers, the difference between who was on season one and two, David Lynch's impact on the show. There's a whole big community out there who I love in general. I love going, especially when I was in darker times. A lot of their content was um, absorbed by me in huge chunks. There's a huge community of Twin Peaks fans. Some even do um, their own fan fiction, even making their own movies. I wish I remembered them all. I'd like to give them a shout out. A great community. Just an awesome fan base. So, like I said, I didn't catch it and was immediately drawn to it. I had things going on in my life, but I was aware of it. More of something my aunt was watching than uh, probably one of the first water cooler shows I can remember growing up. Like I said, about 19. I don't know if anything really before that in my, my case was like that. Season one blows me away. There's just some... 
really interesting themes they use that they may have a lot of missed opportunities, but you could see just how great some of the people involved are. You got Kyle McLaughlin as the uh, main character. And when you look back at it, I would have thought they all would have been famous. And there's been some notoriety into some of the characters or actors and actresses on the show. But maybe it's one of those times where things come together and everything works so well. Season 2, I got it in chunks back then. VCRs, believe it or not. And there's a big difference in the seasons, but I still love it. There's really no... Okay, maybe I'll look back and say, yeah, okay, season one is better than season two, but it doesn't drop for me. I just was so intrigued by the show, so captivated. It just didn't bother me. Now, at the time I got into it, it was a big um, to-do, in a sense, sometime later when Fire Walk With Me came out and it was a prequel. A really dark... um, I guess a surreal mystery horror <laughs> to describe it. Uh, I like it and enjoy it, but I could see where there's a real big difference in love of labor, um, possibly meddling in TV shows. And uh, I'll get to season three and where I think you have a big enough name, you can do what you want. So I thought Fire Walk With Me was excellent in that case. It was... Um, edits had come out afterwards, and there's books, actually, and novels, which I enjoyed. One that came out with the return, or about the same time, and it goes into those characters. The settings, the music, it was just trippy and grounded enough that you still were into it for its mystery when you're bombarded with this craziness and just um you know you can see like a psychedelic experiences which i believe everybody should be doing more i get a kick out of it to this day i'm surprised how well it holds up watching the return now we're talking a little bit about season three which is a big to, big to do there was rumors, and you got this fan base that's been, you know, just dying for content over the years. You had a movie put out, but there was a book. And there's just fans, rabid, just going crazy. I was kind of one of them in the sense where my interest was peaked and I was excited, but I wasn't involved and, in, you know, on message boards and comments and YouTube sec uh, sections. But I was there watching their content and getting excited with everybody. I think it would be um, not proper to say David Lynch has the opportunity to do what he wanted to do, and I respect that. I think it could have been done better. So season three is enjoyable to me. There is some amazing things in this season. But there's a couple of things that just bother me enough that it doesn't make it the put on five times a year type thing. Or I do see myself going back and watching certain episodes. I'm really interested in the lore and everybody guessing at what's going on. And you can't tell what's uh, real in a sense because of his involvement so heavy in the show. David Lynch really took command of it. Uh, like I said, it was more described as filming it in one long run, like a big movie, 18 hours, and then cutting it up. I think you felt that. But Labor of Love, it's what he wanted to do. It's his child. It's their creation. They say they, him and Mark Frost. The actresses, the actors they brought back, I might have used them better. But they did some things in the show that brought tears to my eyes. Just amazing uh, recognition and love for people who made such an important part of people's lives. The show, like I said, just has such a huge following. 
and the fan base is amazing. There's not like a bitterness to it, or it's uh, there's you know fun debates over things. And like I said, season two, season one, uh, Fire Walk with Me, perhaps some of the books and some misleading things in general, and over the years in the background of the of a show like this. But I really I enjoyed it. I could say season three is a, a blast. It's just it's David Lynch unleashed or unfettered, and I think it works. But I would have just loved to see. I think it's a case of it's not what I wanted. I wanted this character to show up faster, and I wanted to know more about this character. Why focus on this? Why keep elements the way they are? I don't give plot reveals and. Spoilers, for the most part. Uh, potentially, I would if there was traction and lots of feedback here and there. Like, I would go dive deep into an episode or a concept. But there are some things that just make you scratch your head and you're just stunned. But it's beautiful to watch. You can tell the genius, the talent, the music. They have a woman who's a singer who performs with David Lynch's son and maybe even David Lynch himself and she's a great singer uh, her name is escaping me now but there's a song from the first season called Sycamore Trees and or the Sycamore Tree she does a live rendition of it that I found and it just hits me to my core it's a beautiful rendition and even the original is amazing so it is one of those shows that visually stunning could be surreal and trippy the concepts could be like mind-blowing and there's an episode in season three or the return everybody talks about and it's centered around the uh first atomic test and it's just fucking ballsy and crazy enough that it works for me so there are just such awesome elements to the show the lore the fan base the love of the creators of it and i get it you go through life and you got a couple of loves of labor and you get enough clout to do what you want let's not talk about george lucas but good for him good for the fans to get a season three i would love to see more i would just be really thrilled it's got that allure for me that i wouldn't debate it as the best show but damn i would defend it as one of my favorites ever so the fanboy in me is um you know just so attached to everything and again i can get i think the good thing is i get upset about it didn't go my way like i didn't get to see what i wanted to see uh, my expectations weren't met in that way and I think that shows you care. You have a love for the characters. And like I said, a, a lot of times, even the fan base, uh, it's one of those um, communities you go to, you don't see the anger and the hatred and other certain areas like with debates and a bunch of other fucking topics. So Twin Peaks in general, I love it, excited, passionate about it. I read people's fan fiction, watch their progress on their movies. Uh, maybe now that I have a YouTube channel, maybe now I'll be a little more vocal. So I'll go back and maybe revisit or actually catch up again. Because I had watched it again recently. And I always try to differentiate the love of my childhood. But this isn't a childhood show. So I'm already a teenager and I actually passed it up to catch it in my mid-twenties, but I think it holds up. It's got its uh, uniqueness. It's a uh, special event. I think the movie was pretty good. I happen to like it a lot, but I could, I could see where people could be thrown off by it. I mean, let alone the casting choices and who was going to be in the show and a bunch of craziness that goes behind the scenes. My recommendation is to go back, even look for Wikipedia or Law, go to uh, 
fan communities and go and see the proper timeline to watch things like you might want to watch fire walk with me first and then season one and two then three there is just such a fun um love of labor element to this that i think is unique and worth giving a shot twin peaks season one and two fire walk with me in season three and there's a couple of novels that you can look into Hope everybody's doing good. I'll talk to everybody later.